Grace and peace be unto you, family, and welcome to Empowered Living with Evangelist Robin Sherrod. I want to welcome you to the lounge, welcome you to our space today, our very authentic, organic space in which we're going to come together and break the word of God. I want to uh, welcome you, whether you're looking at this via YouTube or through podcasts or you're just listening to it through very other social media platforms, we welcome you today. Hey, we wanna get right into what we're going to be unpacking. And today we're gonna to be talking about rising above the rubble. Rising above the rubble. You know, I want you to think about when you have watched a movie or if you've seen something on television where there has been a structure in place, right? It's a structure and when it explodes or where there is an implosion or whether there is some type of structural damage and that structure that was in place that was solid it seemed like that structure was solid and it was in place and then because of a, a defect because of something that intentional may have happened that that structure now is rubble and when you think about rubble I think about a building going down and then all of a sudden you see like the debris that's in the air. You can see it for miles away. It's not something that's static. It's something that lingers. And people know that something has happened to that particular structure because of the rubble that remains. You know, I think about that and I look at where we are presently in our own life and in society and how people are dealing with rubble. People are dealing with structures that they had was in place that are no longer in place and they don't know what to do about it. It could be where they had a family structure in place and now they're dealing with divorce. It could be where they were working, you know, in a position, had a prominent position in their company and now their company has folded or the company lets them know that they're no longer needed or they could be in a situation where they are dealing Dealing with health crisis, their body, their structure of their body. They've taken care of their body. They've eaten all the right things. They've done all the right things. They, they've been healthy throughout their life. And then all of a sudden, a sickness or illness have hit their life. And now they're dealing with the rubble. They're dealing with something that was solid, that was in place, that is no longer in place right now. And many that are under the sound of my voice, I, have, I, I am a living witness myself of even experiencing the rubble of life. No one goes into a marriage expecting to be divorced. No one gets up that morning and they're feeling well in their body and they have a routine doctor's appointment to go to the doctor or to have an ache and a pain and they go see about it and find out they have a terminal illness. No one decides that day when they go to the office or because we're now working virtually that they get on the Zoom call and then their boss is telling them, hey, I need to meet you in this other Zoom room only to tell them, that their position has been absolved, that their position has been absorbed, that there's reshaping in the organization or there's transformation that's happening or transition that's happening and that their services are no longer needed. No one goes in thinking that. No one thinks about when they're about ready to give birth to their beautiful baby child that there was going to be complications and that there's going to be some abnormalities. No one does that. No one goes out and thinking that they're going to go um, to on a run or they're going to go to the gym only to get assaulted or get to, or to get raped. No one goes out deliberately looking for the structure that they had in place to experience rubble, to experience disruption, to experience an explosion. But sometimes life will bring that your way. And when it does, what do you and I do in order to survive? We have been able to survive so far and we thank God for being a survivor. 
But what happens? What do you do? How do you come out of the rubble? How do you rise up out of that rubble? Some people are not able to. Some people are still in the rubble. You know how when there is rubble, you have the first responders to go in, right? And the first responders are looking for what? They are looking for life. They are looking and they are expecting to see some form of life, even in the midst of all the rubble. Now, there are going to be other people that's on the sidelines that's thinking, how in the world could something be still alive out of this rubble? We look at it and it's nothing but shreds. But they're the first responders and these first responders go in and they go in looking and expecting to find life. And I want to share with you that in the rubble that you may find yourself in, you still have a lifeline. You still have the oxygen flowing in your body. You still are able to have a future even in the rubble. I go back and I think about some of the stories that you find when people are under rubble and how they say they've been there for days. Some people have to be, you know, in a maybe a coal mine. There's been some rubble there or maybe a building that goes down. And when you hear the stories of the people that come out of that rubble, they talk about how they were there, you know, for hours on end and how it was just nothing but darkness around them. And there were points in their life and their time period when they, when they were in the rubble where they thought that they weren't going to come out. But they always say something I think that just kind of runs as a theme throughout it all. They said they never gave up hope. They still believed. Even though there were some pockets of time when things got a little tight and they would begin to think about their family and wishing that they had made some phone calls. But one thing they say that they held on to, and that was hope. And so I want to encourage you, as I encourage myself, that when the rubble of life happens, you still got to hold on to hope. You still have to hold on to H. O P E. You have to hold on to hope. You have to know that regardless of what this looks like currently, that this is not how it is going to turn out. I'm speaking to someone right now. It looks like you are in and you may be uh, in rubble but it's not what it looks like. You still have your oxygen. You still have a lifeline. You still have blood pumping through your veins. You still have the capacity in your mind. You still have the ability to, to, to uh, have faith in God, regardless of what situation you may find yourself in or the rubble of life. And that is what I want to encourage you with and talk about. And in the scripture, over in the book of Joshua, I'm going to speak about it here really quickly, but over in the book of Joshua chapter two, it talks about Rahab. Now we know Rahab, right? We think of Rahab and most of the time when you see her in the scripture over here in Joshua, when I look at my text, it tells me, it says about Rahab and it speaks about her, the prostitute, okay? Okay. Rahab the prostitute. And there are situations in which, you know, we come out of that we are not proud of, right? There are things that have happened in our life that cause us to make choices in our life that we are not proud of. I know I'm number one in that. And you may have some situations and some experiences that you have had happened in your life that you are not proud of. And that's the same thing that happened with Rahab. Here she was, she's a prostitute over in Joshua chapter two. We don't know how she became a prostitute. We don't know what life situations have brought about to her that caused her to go into this type of uh, profession, if you will. But this is where she is. And even where she's at, she is in the Bible. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that it does not matter what your background is. It does not matter what happened to you before. What matters is what's going on with you now and what's going to happen in the future. And that's what I'm talking about, rising above the rubble. Here this woman was 
the Bible, she's in the word of God, number one. And then it says that she was a prostitute. There are things, again, that we all done that we are not proud of. It may not be, you may not have been a prostitute, but there's some other things. Come on now. If the video camera was played about our lives that we would not want anyone to see, we would want that tape to be burned. We would want that tape to be in the incinerator. And we don't want that tape to be ever to be found again. But this woman, Rahab, now she was in a situation. She was in a situation where she was in a city, okay? She was in Jericho. And the Lord had already told Joshua, who was now leading the children of Israel because Moses was dead, that they were going to go over into the promised land and that they were going to take the promised land. And so in him sending out those that were a part of his camp to kind of spy out everything, he sends out the spies. And the spies, they come in contact with Rahab, okay? This was not something that they were looking to do. This was something that was divinely orchestrated by God. I want to tell you that no matter where you may find yourself, uh, that God, if his hand is on you, he is going to find you. And there are many of you right now, you may be in situations and you are in situations that are not conducive to your future. They're not conducive to your destiny. They're not conducive to your purpose. Uh, but I want you to know that God is is finding you out. And when he finds you out, he sent the spies to Rahab. And when they got there, they began to have this discussion and then they began to have this dialogue. And we find here that the spies came and Rahab, that she secretly, um, uh, she secretly took the two men into her house and that they stayed there that night. Now, come on, think about it now. Think about the super saints, right? Think about the holy rollers, right? When they see that Joshua, he's sending out the spies and then they go into the prostitute's house. What's the first thing that people start thinking about? Mm -hmm, I know what they're doing in there, okay? But you got to remember something. You have to understand something that it's not about what people say about you. It's about what you are saying to yourself. It's about what's in your spirit. It's about what God is saying about you and the assignment that he has for you. Are you with me? So then the, uh, the spies go in and they begin uh, to talk about, you know, um, how that Rahab had brought them into the house and, and that they have left the town. And it talks about these men and they were looking out and, and before, and, and there were people that came that were looking for the spies, right? There were people that came looking for the spies, but Rahab told them, say, look, okay, um, they're not here. They're not here. But what she did, she took them and she hid them up on the rooftop so that they would be uh, taken care of and that they would be protected, if you will. So in that, in that protection, and in her sacrifice of doing this, now you can go over to Joshua chapter two and read it for yourself for the sake of time, um, because I want to keep this down, you know, to a certain time period. Um, but you can go ahead and read it for yourself. So to make um, a long story short here, um, Rahab, she puts the spies up. She actually protects the spies. And then for that, they tell her, they said, when we come back, when we are coming back to uh, take this city, that if you have a rope outside of your window, talking about this scarlet rope that you have outside this window, that when we come and we see it, that everyone that is in your house is going to be protected, okay? Everyone in your home is going to be protected. So uh, the, the, the spies get up, they stay there for three days. Uh, the men that were searching for them, um, they and they were not able to find them, and they finally returned back uh, to Joshua, and they returned back to him and gave him a good report and told him about this situation dealing with Rahab. So um, the story continues to move forward, and it's time now for the children of Israel to go in and to um, take this land that God had already told them. So they go in, and they march around the walls of Jericho. Okay, now Rahab, mind you, is inside the walls of Jericho, first of all. Now, you may understand this and think about the walls that you are surrounded around that's in your life at this particular moment, okay? So they walk around these walls and they walk around once every day 
and then for six days. On the seventh day, they go around the wall seven times and then they blow the trumpet and what happens? The structures begin to come down. There is a rubble that happens. There's an explosion that happens because God has ordained this to be so. When this occurs, when this happens, when they see the rope, when they see the scarlet, when they see this um, uh, uh, this this uh, item that's outside of the window, they remember and they say, oh, this is Rahab and her family and they survive, okay? So out of the rubble, they begin to rise up. I want you to know and understand something. When God's hand of protection is upon you, which it is, you got to understand and realize and know that when there is rubble that happens, the rubble of life that comes your way, that God will cause you to rise up from out of that rubble, just like he did with Rahab. And it's not about your past, but it's about your present and it's about your future. Sometimes we blame ourselves because of our past. We think that the rubble that we face in life is because of the things that I've done in my past. Yes, we all have a past, but again, God has a present future for you and for I. And the story of him using Rahab, the story of him moving in on, on her behalf. Now, there, the city was full of all kinds of people that was in that city. He could have saved anybody else he wanted. He could have saved the CEO. He could have saved Mr. and Mrs. Sanctified and Holy Ghost Field. He could have saved those that had money going, running from one end of the town to the other end of the town. He could have saved the most upstanding citizens in that town. But God decided to, to save Rahab. He started he decided to save not only her, but her family. Don't you know when God ride, brings you up out of the rubble of life that God is not only going to raise you up, but he's also going to raise your family up as well. So I want to encourage you as I encourage myself in this word to know that your family is going to come out of it as well. You all may be going through right now. It may seem like how we all going to come out of this, but I want you to know when God rises you up out of the rubble of life, that there is is something else on the other side and it's called an abundant blessing. Continuing on with Rahab and her story. Do you know who Rahab married? I'm going to read it to you right here. Rahab, when she rised up out of the rubble, do you know that she married a prince? Rahab, the prostitute, she married a prince from Judah. We know that Judah means what? Praise. And we know that Rahab was in the lineage of Boaz, okay? Um, because we know that uh, Rahab was the mother of Boaz. So out of this prince relationship that she had, she had Boaz. We know that Boaz um, is through the line of the lineage of David. Now, you got to think about what she was able to leave to her son, okay? She came out of prostitution. She came out of destitution. She came out of a background that she really didn't want to be in, a background that she did not ask for, a background based on circumstances of life that she had to deal with. There were things that she had to deal with in terms of the rubble of life. She had to go through the walls coming down, the walls tumbling down. She had to go through a serious faith walk in the rubble of life. I want to speak to you and let you know know that you are walking through the most intense faith walk of your life as you deal with the rubble of life, as you deal with the structurally things that she was in place in your life that are no longer there. But I want to encourage you to know that even in the rubble of life, God will raise you up. God, as he did with Rahab, 
And what did he do? He did not allow her past to define her future because she married a prince of Judah. And out of that prince of Judah was a, a son that was born by the name of Boaz. And when Boaz was born, Boaz was born into affluence. Boaz was born not in the house of a prostitute, but he was born in a house of a palace. He was born where he had... Um, a uh, uh, substance around him. He had resources available to him. How do we know that? We know that because when we look at the story of Naomi, we look at the story of Ruth. Uh, when we think about when Ruth came uh, uh, back, when they came back to Jerusalem, to the house of bread, and how we see that Boaz had this field. And how did he come into all of this abundance? He came into all of this abundance because of the sacrifices and because of the choices that his mother made. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you right now that you may be in the rubble of life. You are in the rubble of life, but your, your choices that you make at this point is going to affect not only you, but those that are assigned to you. I'm talking about your family members. I'm talking about your children. You and I want to leave a legacy to our children. And this is what Ruth was able to do. And then we find her story. Not only did she hit the Old Testament, but Ruth was over in the New Testament, over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, when it talks about the Hebrews of faith. And it says specifically, let me go ahead on and get this for you as I get ready to close. But I want to encourage you with this word because I think it's important. And the Bible says over in Hebrews here, 11 and 31, it says it was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Although in the book of Hebrews, we find here that she is still referred to um, as Rahab, it says uh, the prostitute. However, that was not the ending of her story. She ended up being the mother, being a part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you right now, I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what rubble has come in your life. I know I've experienced the rubbles of life myself, but I tell you what, when you hold on to God, when you have the faith in God and you said, I, I know I've had some trying times. I know there's been some spaces in my time of life where my faith has wavered, but I stand before you today as the man asked the Lord, he said, Lord, I do believe, but have Help my unbelief. So right now I speak to my dear sisters and brothers as we continue to go before God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sisters and brothers that are listening to this broadcast today, that are listening, God, through other platforms today, Father. I thank you that the word transcends, God. The word does not just sit dormant, but the word of God is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. God, your word can go out. We can speak a word and our life is changed by the word that is spoken. I thank you for destiny. God. I thank you for destiny designers that are right here in the room right now. I thank you, Father God, that these are destiny fulfillers, Lord, in the name of Jesus that are in the room right now. I thank you, Father God, that destiny will not be aborted in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you, Father God, that your hand, just as it was on the Rahab the prostitute, that your hand is on everyone, God, that is viewing this right now in the name of Jesus. I ask God that you touch their hope. Uh, touch their hope, God, that's in the rubble. Go into the rubble of their lives right now in the name of Jesus, God, and touch their hope, Lord. They're still breathing, God. There are still uh, 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 veins that are running, God, blood that are running through their veins, God, even in the rubble, Lord. God, although they may be breathing a little bit heavy, in this time of their rubble, in their season of rubble, even though, God, they may be breathing sporadically, God, because they don't know where their 
next breath is going to come from. But God, you are the breath of life. And right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the breath of life to breathe new and afresh, God, upon your people right now, Lord. Those right now, God, that are having the most difficult time in their life, God, I thank you, Lord, by the blood of Jesus that you're pulling them out of the rubble right now, God, and that, Father, they will be, God, encouraged in you, Father, that they will be and they will know, God, that for God I live and for God I die, and there is nothing that is too hard for you, God. Lord, we pray right now for the deliverance, God, the snatching, God, of your people out of the rubble, God, the snatching, God, out of the rubble of sickness, the snatching, God, out of the rubble of financial despair, the snatching, God, out of out of the hopelessness, God, of possibly losing a job or losing a relationship, or losing a loved one, God, or losing something, Father, that they thought was going to be structurally in place, of them losing a dream, God, of God, them losing, Father God, they're, they're a hope, God. We thank you right now, God, that you are snatching them out of the rubble, Lord, and that their latter will be greater than their former, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' mighty, magnificent, holy, majestic, name that we pray, God, by the blood of Jesus, by the hand of Jesus, by the delivering power of Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. I feel like running around here and giving God some praise because he is worthy. I want to let you know that God's hand is on your life and you are not by yourself. I want you, when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, to tell you to just to take it. You know what? Just, just let it go. Just let it be. I, why don't you just give up? Why don't you just, you know, check out of here? I bind the devil of checking out in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the, the God of checking in. I thank you for the God of life. Uh, you have life. God loves you. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. People are depending upon you. People are depending upon you and you can do this. You can survive, not only survive, but you can thrive. Not only can you thrive, but you can live and you can live this life more abundantly. I'm a living witness to tell you. I'm not sitting here talking no Cinderella story. I'm here telling you about the things that I've gone through. I'm telling you right now, you don't look like you what you're going through. You're not going to look like what you have gone through. I tell you what, because God and in his infinite care, he's able to restore. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, I will restore. God is a God of restoration and you stay encouraged and know this, Know this, that we love you, that you are loved and many people out there love you and that you are not in this by yourself. Hey, I want you to know to have a great today, have a greater tomorrow and more blessed days ahead because your life matters and we love you. We appreciate you being a part of our broadcast. If this has blessed you, I want you to share this. Go ahead and share this with others. Get this word out. Let people know that you can rise above the rubble. You can do it. It's in you. God has already placed it in you. All you got to do is pull it out and let it go forth. And I tell you what, you're going to be a blessing, not only to yourself, you're going to be a testimony and you already are a testimony. You will make it. God bless you again. And we love you. We got to go until we see each other in the lounge again. Many, many, many abundant blessings to you. God bless you. We love you. We love you.